President Putin has now or ordered Russian nuclear forces on high alert with the rising international tension over the invasion in Ukraine. This order means that Putin wants Russia's nuclear weapons prepared for increased readiness to launch. In giving this directive, Putin cited what he called, quote, aggressive statements by top NATO powers, along with the West's hard-hitting financial sanctions. There is a lot of history. There is a lot of context about the political moves that have led up to the war in Ukraine. Joining us now now is MSU Denver's President Janine Davidson, who is also on the U.S. Department of Defense Policy Board. Janine, we were just following these latest developments, and we've also been following the latest sanctions that were meant to slow Russia down. But how much is this actually going to work at this point of the war? Well, you know, sanctions are a good threat in terms of deterring uh, an actor like, like Vladimir Putin from doing what he's done. But then once he's done it, it's very slow these kinds of things are very slow to take hold. Now we are in a situation where we have to get him to reverse his actions and actually withdraw from, from, from Ukraine. So it could take a while. You know, one of the things that we'd heard President Biden talking about and internationally was removing Russian banks from SWIFT, essentially crippling them from international transactions. But is this really gonna impact leaders of Russia or is it gonna hurt the people living in Russia more? Well, it will do both. Um, it will definitely hurt Vladimir Putin from operating um, from the Russian economy in general, from being connected to the international economy. But it's also in combination with other sanctions that we did also put on uh, Vladimir Putin himself personally. So, you know, we are talking about the whole situation escalating, like the update we just gave. How much are other countries now taking notes about what Russia is doing and their own moves and the global impact from all of that? Yeah, you know, I mean, we used to say you can't just invade other countries. This is the international order that was carefully crafted and actively managed for almost 80 years by the United States and um, the rest of the international community. So this is something that is really, really knocking down that system. Um, the rest of the world has taken note. Almost everybody has uh, decried what is happening in, in Ukraine. Um, the Germans have pledged to send uh, lethal weapons to Ukraine, which they had been holding off on doing. But more to your question about the norms and the trend, uh, you know, what a lot of people are worried about, myself included, is the impact this will have on China. You know, China's paying attention. They have a similar um, situation in their minds vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan. And you could see a situation where um, they're operating off of Putin's playbook, if you will, uh, and acting on Taiwan, something also we should be really concerned about. You know, and speaking of, you know, President Putin saying that NATO is being aggressive right now, which is his reaction with the nuclear forces, uh, Ukraine has been trying to join NATO for some time. What kind of protection would that have mm -hmm. afforded Ukraine? And how much was Russia able to intervene to stop them from joining? Yeah, look, there is a reason why uh, the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, um, and also Romania, well, there's a reason why all these countries since the fall of the Soviet Union have been wanting to get under the protection of NATO. NATO has something really important called Article 5, which says an attack on one is an attack on all. And they know, they've been saying for years that Russia was going to come back. Um, not everybody believed that. It was somewhat controversial, um, but I think it's been proven pretty correct. And Ukraine has been, is not in NATO, has been talking about joining NATO, and has not been able to meet the requirements so far. There are a number of requirements that, that are required about being a democracy. Um, but there's also, you know, not necessarily agreement across Ukraine, East and the West. Um, some folks in Ukraine are a lot more um, eager to join NATO than others. All right. And what about Russia playing a role in what happens with Ukraine joining NATO? Did they have as much influence as has been discussed right now? Sure. I mean, Russia has been so against Ukraine joining NATO. Russia, especially Vladimir Putin's biggest thing has been that Ukraine is historically supposed to be a part of Russia. He has been pushing that narrative for years and years. And since 2014, when he invaded the eastern part of Ukraine, he's been actively uh, 
cultivating that narrative among the separatists in that region. And so he's definitely been stoking discontent inside Ukraine so that they can't come to agreement on this um, important decision. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and that perspective as we're following the latest developments out of Ukraine. Thanks so much, Janine. Thank you. We'll get a